Hey everybody, Josh from Populi here. Today, let's talk about running a course in Populi. This video is going to be of particular interest to faculty and teaching assistants, but academic admins, registrars might get some good information here as well. Let's say you're new faculty at a school. You're starting off and maybe you're teaching a course that you're not super familiar with. The course is Sheep 101. Your main area of interest is goats. If only you were teaching Goats 101, wouldn't that be the life? Too bad you're not. It's Sheep 101 for you. But you're throwing yourself into it. You've got all this new area to cover and then you've got to learn a new software on top of that. That's tough. But what we're doing here today is giving you some groundwork to really understand how to use a course in Populi. We're not going to be exhaustive. We're not going to cover every aspect of courses in Populi. There's lots that you'd be able to dig into after you watch this video. What we're going to do is kind of show you how to set some basic things up. We're going to show you the life cycle of the course so that you can see what's available and what to shoot for. And then you'll be able to get into our knowledge base or maybe um, talk to our support team and they'll be able to help you dig in further on particular areas that you wanna cover. So that information is out there, but today we're gonna to move pretty quick. I promise we won't ruminate on any one topic too long. Let's real quick talk about the life cycle of a course in Populi. The process is courses created, set up, so you add assignments, lessons, discussions, everything. Students work through those lessons. You grade their work. You administer tests. You take attendance. You do all that stuff. And then at the end of the term, make sure that you've input all the grades. Final grades are what they should be. You might even enter end of the term comments, grade comments for students, whatever it is you're finished and done, and then you finalize the course. Students have an in-progress grade that whole time until you actually finalize the course, and they get a transcript grade. So that finalization pushes a grade out to their transcript, and that becomes their final grade in their course, the grade of record. So that's the life cycle. Set up, run the course, administer tests, all that, and then finalize the course and you're all done. Let's talk about the roles necessary to do this work. The primary roles that we're looking at, the things that we're, that we're going to do today are going to be faculty and teaching assistant role-based. Academic admins and registrars would be able to do many of the things that we're looking at, but for the most part, we would be looking to faculty and teaching assistants to do this. That comes into play, especially when we're talking about grading student work, like going into a test, and assigning the correct point value um, on a sort of more subjective question on a test. You would have to have either faculty or the um, teaching assistant role to do that. However, to get a course in the first place, you would need to um, have the academic admin um, create a course on a term so that you could have a course instance to work in. So we're assuming that's all been done and now you're just coming to the empty course instance and we're gonna talk about some of the setup there. Okay, let's navigate to the actual course. We're gonna do that by going to my courses and then we're gonna find, you can see that this user is set as faculty on two different courses here. So we're gonna to go to example course section two we land here, you can see some options. We don't wanna to get too fixated on this section of things because we're not talking about the dashboard right now. We're gonna go straight to the syllabus. The first thing that you'd wanna do is get this course set up so that it can be published so that uh, students can, as they're registering, they'd be able to come here and see um, what's required of them potentially. So one of the things that you'd be able to do is add a syllabus. Let's say you have a PDF on your computer. You could just upload that file here. Just click that and then find that file and drop it in. Or you would be able to add content. So you could just sort of design a syllabus right here. 
It's up to you however you wanna do that, but you want that content there so that students can see what's required of them, all that. You know how a syllabus works. The other options that we have over here on the right relate to adding supplies. So if this is say some kind of nursing course or something, you would be able to have various medical supplies that you want students to have to participate in the course. You can also add links. There's maybe some helpful videos on YouTube that you just wanna pop in here for context. You'd be able to do that. Then we also have the ability to add files. So these would be other files than the syllabus say, and then we can add books. So whatever the texts are that you're going to refer students to, you could add those right here. And then you're able to also decide whether or not those are going to be required. So let's search for this particular text. We're gonna make it required, and then we're gonna save. And you can see now that's a required book over there. That's how you would build out your reading list, any texts that are required there. Um, you would just add right there, along with any other details about the course. Okay, let's go look at adding meeting times. This is something that your registrar might have already done for you as they're creating the course instance. They might have the schedule and they've input all the meeting times. Let's say they haven't. In order for you to do this, you would go to settings over here on the left and then you would click add meeting time over on the right. You might have courses that meet nine to 10, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could set those all up at once here. Let's say that you have a course that meets on Tuesdays from nine to 10, and then on Thursdays from three to four. This is how you would set that up. You would click Tuesday initially there, set this to nine, set this to 10. You would choose whatever building and room um, you're gonna use there if you know that, and then you would save. And then you would add another meeting time for Thursday, we said 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Set those as well on that one, assuming it's the same place, and then save. Now when we do that, we've got two different meeting times there that we added. What's happened behind the scenes is that we've actually created attendance events. So you would be able to go over here on the left to the attendance tab, and if you're gonna take attendance for one of your class meetings, you'd be able to go there, find that class meeting, would already be created there, and you could take attendance for that. So just creating the meeting times here creates attendance events over there. That's creating meeting times. Okay, let's look at creating assignments and assignment groups over on the assignments tab. You'll see that over on the left there. We're gonna click in there. What we'll look at here is adding those assignments. Those assignments make up the work that you're receiving from students, the work that they're doing. There are several different types and we'll talk about those. To add an assignment, all we're gonna do is click add assignment and then select add an assignment under that. The two essentials here is we have to give it a name. So we're gonna give this a name of week one. This is an essay. We're not gonna give it a description, but you can. And then we're gonna give it points. You have to give it points and a name. Then you'll see that we've got type right here. It's currently set to grade only. Grade only means that students don't really interact with this. This is just a grade that you're setting. So if it's something like a participation grade, then you would want a grade only uh, a type here. For this one, we've got a couple of options. There is an essay type. This is a type of assignment where students get in and then write an essay within Populi and submit it that way. What we're gonna say here is that we want a file type. This means that a student is going into their own word processor, writing an essay, and then probably best option is to export that to PDF. They have it on their, on their computer, and then they upload it as a file here to Populi. Then you as faculty can read the file, you can read the, the essay there, from that file. You can also make annotations there, so you can add corrections or um, encouragements or whatever there, and then you can give that assignment a grade. So that's what's going on there. We're gonna skip most of this other information for right now. You can set availability, so if this is available for them the first week of class, you could set that availability there. We're gonna talk about it two other 
um, assignment types. So we'll real quick add another assignment here. And then we wanna talk about the test. This is the most complicated assignment type. Discussions is probably close on its heels for complexity. And then we're gonna set, we've got the type set to test already, great. We're gonna change the points to 10. And then we're gonna leave all this other information blank for right now. Now, when we create this, we're creating half of, of the actual test. This is the assignment portion of the test. You have to create this before you can actually create the test that students are going to take. This is an online test here, so students will be able to log into Populi, come to the course, and take this test. Um, so you'll see here, now that I've created that, we have this draft here. It means this is not a published assignment. The other item here that is worth noting is the discussion type. Give it 10 points here as well. We're gonna say that this is a new discussion. So if you've already created discussions, you can create an assignment that then associates with those discussions, but we're creating the assignment first, and that's gonna mean that then this will generate a discussion. Similar to the way that a test works, we're creating the assignment portion, and then there will be an actual discussion portion as well. We're gonna leave all this blank and save. Okay, so now we have three assignments here. Let's say that your course is going to be made up of multiple weeks of a discussion, an essay, and a quiz. That's the work that students are doing on a weekly basis here that they need assignments for. So we wanna be able to categorize those according to the, um, the actual grade weight. So in this course, the essay is going to be worth 50% of the grade. So we wanna be able to divide that up and have Populi do all the calculations for that. And so you don't have to get out your calculator and do that on your own. So let's add an assignment group here. We're gonna add an assignment group for essays and we're gonna make this 50% of the course. Leave these blank and then save. Then we'll add two more. We're gonna say discussions. We're gonna make that 25% of the grade. And then we'll add another one for uh, quizzes. We're gonna make that 25% of the grade and then save. Okay, so now we have, what well, we've ended up here with are four different categories of assignment type. What we don't have are those associated with assignments. You can create the assignment groups first that have all your grade weights there, and then just as you're creating assignments, set that as the assignment group for that assignment. But we did it the other way, it's no big deal. All we have to do is come up here, say edit groups and assignments, and then we're gonna go here for week one discussion. We're gonna add that to the assignment group. The essay, we're gonna add to the essays group, and then the quiz to the quiz group and then save. So obviously you would then go ahead and create all the week's different assignments there. And then once you have those associated with the correct categories, as you input grades, as students complete work, all that, they're going to get a grade that's weighted properly according to these different categories. It's gonna save you a lot of time. It'll be real nice for you. So that's creating assignments and assignment groups. Let's look at creating lessons in Populi. We're gonna click on lessons over there. You'll see there are no lessons currently. Obviously, we're gonna click add a lesson. We'll give it a name. This is week one. And then the availability, we're just opting here to uh, make this lesson available at the start date of this particular course. I'm gonna save this, so we're gonna get week one as a lesson. You, you might be set up any number of different ways, but just in terms of demonstrating how this might work, this is how we're gonna think about it. You've got your week's work for a student and you're gonna have a lesson that sort of organizes that. We're in our kind of hypothetical example here. We've got um, a video lecture that we're gonna associate with a lesson and then we're gonna also have those assignments that we created associated with this lesson too. So students will be able to come to the lesson 
and just see everything that they have to do here and then work through that. And that will um, give you the ability to also be able to monitor their progress through a week's work. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to see who's finishing up, who's lagging behind, all that sort of stuff. So let's go to the design tab. You'll see we default to the view tab when we click into this lesson. Let's go to design. What we're gonna do first here is add a file. We're gonna get that lecture file and bring that in. So this is a video lecture and we're gonna get that uploaded and then we're gonna say that we are requiring students to view or download this file. And once we click that, it means that students now have to either download the file to their computer and that will mark them as having completed this lecture or they would watch it here in Populi. If they watch the file here in Populi, um, then we track the amount of time spent on the video and then we are able to say, oh, they watched the entire video. Quick note about requiring videos. Um, you can require a, an uploaded video like we did here in this example differently than you can require a YouTube video. So a YouTube video, you can embed it as part of your content here and that'll show up as part of the lesson, but we can't really require that video in the same way that we can a video that you are, where you actually take the file, upload it to the course and include it as part of the lesson. So we're gonna save that and then that pops up there. So that's part of this lesson. Now we're going to go in and add a couple of assignments. Okay, so this isn't creating assignments. We've already created those assignments. We're now going to choose to associate those assignments with this lesson. So we're gonna add, bring in week one discussion. We're going to make that required and then save. That's telling us that the discussion itself hasn't been fully set up yet. So there are no requirements for that right now. Then we're gonna click assignment again. We're gonna add the essay. We're gonna make that required and then save. And then we'll do the same for that quiz, required, save. And obviously we still have to set up that quiz as well. Okay, so you can see over here on the right, we've got the assignments there, discussions, if there were any files here, there's that one file. And then we can go back to view and kind of see what we've got going on here. So this is very bare bones. Most instructors would probably fill it out with a little more text saying, you know, do this with the discussion, here's what's gonna happen with the essay, et cetera, which you can do, you can, you can add various design elements in there, headings and things, you can get real fancy. Um, but just to kind of demonstrate how this works, this would be how you could set up a lesson so that you have your lecture and then your various assignments associated with that. And then um, once students complete the lecture and then work through those assignments, you're gonna be able to check in and see how they're making progress through everything. That's the basics of setting up lessons in Populi. Let's talk about actually creating, remember those online tests, we've got the test assignment out there, but now we need to create the test itself. To do that, we're gonna to go to tests and then we'll click on week one quiz. We could um, add some a heading text, you can make these fancy as well. We're doing this bare bones, so we're just gonna add a question right off. We're gonna make it multiple choice, we're gonna tell students to choose A, and then we're gonna add the possible answers for multiple choice. So we're gonna do an A, and then B, and then a C. You can see here that we have opted to make A the correct answer. Okay, so that is 100% credit right there. There's all these different options. We're not gonna mess with those right now. We're gonna, we are gonna change the point values here. We're gonna change the points to five. And then we're gonna click save. So now we have our first question en entered. We did multiple choice, but we could do any number of different types. We'll click down here and click add question. And then we're gonna change, we're gonna look at some of these types here. We have short answer, put in order, multiple answer, essay, true, false, matching. Obviously a number of these include automatic grading. So true, false, automatic grading, multiple choice, 
automatic grading. But there are some that are a little squishier, like essay. There's no way of doing automatic grading on an essay question. We could also do short answer, which we do have a form of automatic grading for. So let's look at that. We are asking students here to type example, and actually we'll change this E to a capital E, and you'll see why in a second, um, because we're gonna use case sensitive grading here and we're gonna say that the correct answer is example typed exactly that way. We could go through and give other options here for something that somebody might type that we would count or not count. So you can add potential answers there that Populi will try to automatically grade. However, if we don't see like exact matches here, there's nothing we can do to grade that answer. And all that means is that you will end up with some questions to go through um, as you're administering the course. We'll look at that in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna change this to five points because we're just gonna have those two questions here and then we're going to save that. So now we have a test with these two questions. We can preview it. This is how it's gonna look to students right here. And then we can go back to design so that's that. What we have now is a test with an assignment component and the actual questions so that students could take this test. So that's creating the test there, the questions on the test. But there's lots of other information over here that you have access to, different things that you can set. So one of the big things will be availability, due date. The availability is the window in which a student can take this test. So if, a, if your course is set up to really have students sort of work at their own pace, then that lesson is gonna do most of the work deciding about when they get access to this. But if you want it to be something where, okay, we've got a test coming up on Friday and it's gonna run from 10 to 12, then um, you would uh, set that availability here. It's really easy to set. You just input the date, the time that that's gonna open at, and then you input a date and a time at which it would close. And then you would save and that would uh, make that change there. And then you would also be able to adjust the time limit. This currently does not have a time limit, but you could set a time limit of whatever you want there. For this one, let's say that we're gonna give it a time limit of two hours and then save. Maybe this test is just going to run from 10 to 12 on a Friday. So there's a two hour time limit. That means if somebody started at 10, they would be able to go all the way through 12 um, with that two hour time, time limit. But what happens if they start at 10.30? Do they still have two hours? No that two hour time limit is just within the range of the availability. Once they reach the end of the availability there, so if the, if the end time is 12 o'clock and they started at 10.30, that means they, the, the best they could do is an hour and a half there. When they get to 12, the test is gonna be over for them. So the availability trumps the time limit that's set. It's a good thing to keep in mind. We also have retake options here. You can set retake so that students are able to um, get in there and um, take the test more than once. And then we also have feedback. You can choose whether or not students are able to see um, answer, correct answers once they finish the test, or you can also make that so that it, they can see correct answers after the test window closes. So that means nobody's able to still get back in there and take the test, then they can see correct answers and they can go back and review their work on that test. We also have proctoring as an option there as well. So once you have a course that actually has students in that course, you're able to set specific exceptions. And that's what we're looking at here. So you could set due date exceptions, availability exceptions, et cetera. Let's say that a student has a scheduling conflict with the initial time that you had scheduled that test for, they need to take it on a different day, you would use add an exception here for availability to allow them to take that on a different day. So we could choose the student, give them a new date and time window, and then um, click save, and then there would be an availability exception on 
that test. We can do the same thing with time limits. Some students um, with certain learning disabilities might get an extended time limit to be able to take a test. Um, so they might get three hours instead of two hours. If you only have a two hour window there and they need to get three hours, you would set an availability exception for them that allows that time to extend for them. And then you would also set a time limit exception for them. So you'd have to have both of those in play there to manage that for a student. And then we have retake exceptions as well and various other things there. Um, so if a student is gonna get to take a test a second time, or maybe there's an extenuating circumstance for them, they've already taken the test, you could get them a, a retake exception and uh, they'd be able to take it again. That's some of the details over here that are involved with actually managing this test. Related to that, you are able to get another angle on how a course looks from a student perspective just by coming over here. So let's say that you have complaints from students they are not able to see a given test. You wanna find out if that's generally true or just true for a single student. We can view this course as a student right here, clicking those three stacked dots and choosing that option. And then we can see right here, oh, well this course, this test is showing up as available for me to take now. So in general, this test is available to students. So there might be something specific going on with a student or maybe they're lying. So that's one way of doing some quick troubleshooting and just making sure that the uh, test is set up as it ought to be. We can click exit and remove test student to get rid of that. And now the course is back to the way that it was. Those are some details about using quizzes. When students come in, they will see exactly if the test is currently available. Um, we'll see exactly what we saw there, um, that there's a take now option. They can go in and take, click that and begin to take the test. Once they do that, Populi will automatically grade everything that it can. So all the multiple choice questions, put in order, true and false, all these kinds of things. Populi can immediately give those answers. With essay questions that are more subjective, you'll have to review those questions and, um, and then assign grades for those. Also for short answer, if there's any kind of ambiguity there, um, Populi will default to let you make the choice about whether or not something is correct. And you'll see those show up, those to be graded questions show up here under tests and then under to be graded. So we've got um, the week one quiz. We had the question that requires them to type out example. And we see that this guy wrote in sample. He didn't understand, he got it wrong. So we could choose to um, give him a zero or zero points here, add a comment, whatever we wanna do there. And then we could refresh this to see if we have any more work to do, if any other student questions have come up. No, they haven't. So now that student has had the multiple choice question there graded automatically, and then we've graded his um, short answer there manually. So those are both work together and Populi so that you can get those tests graded, get students work um, evaluated, get them feedback. Okay, so that's how we handle grading student work on tests, but let's look more generally at grading assignments. We're gonna click over to the assignments tab and we're gonna go into the week one essay and we'll see that we've received files. This is a file type assignment. We're requiring an upload of a file from students here. So we can see that we've got files for these three students. This would be the typical workflow that you would take here for, um, for these students. You've got a number of assignment submissions. So you're gonna come in and you're going to have a look at that assignment here in Populi. So this is one option. You can come in and just immediately see that. I mentioned we have annotations. So you can annotate things right here and make a comment and then save. And then students will be able to see those, that annotation there. They'd click on that and see that. Another option is just to download this file, look at it on your own computer. If they've uploaded, say, a doc file there, you would be able to use Word 
to make annotations here and then upload it back into Populi for them to see. Kind of a number of, of different options there. Once you've got what you're looking for, you've read the essay, you um, are, have an idea of what the grade is that you're going to give them, you would click enter grades, you would assign that grade there, however you wanna do it, by points or by letter. You could enter any comments that you wanted to make generally here about um, the work. And then this is where we're saving you some time. You can just save and go to the next student. We'll go right on to the next student. You'd look at them, um, their work here, give it a grade, keep going. Okay, so that's the easiest way to manage grading work like this in, in Populi. Um, we also have the option, you'll notice here, if we're just clicked into the assignment, so if I go to the assignments tab and then click on that essay assignment, I have an option to download all assignment files. So I could get all of those files down to my computer and then have them there to review and then upload them once I've revised or uh, made comments um, in another software, get them back onto each student's file. So that's another way of operating. And maybe if we did that, we've got everybody there, we could enter grades this way. So you have some options there for how to get students their grades. The other option is you can go directly to the grade book and just go to edit grades and just enter those grades real quickly that way. You can also directly adjust a student's final grade there. So that is how you work with student assignments and enter student grades in Populi. We have talked about taking attendance. But we haven't actually seen it. Let's go take a look. We'll go to the attendance tab over here on the left. And you can see that because we created those meeting times, we have all these attendance events for this course. Um, we can move through the months. So this is a course that's already been operating for a little while. So it has all these old attendance events. If we click on any of them, we can go in and then adjust this to be whatever it ought to be. So um, we can set students to absent, tardy, excused. It will default to present. And then once we save attendance, we'll see how that looks there. We had four students present there. And um, then we have um, all these outstanding attendance events that we still need to take. So that's taking manual attendance. We also do have a more automated attendance taking option. That is our Bluetooth beacon attendance taking system. That works through the Populi app. So the faculty and the instructor um, would need to have that app on their phone and then they initiate this beacon and then everybody's sort of within a radius in the classroom there um, who also has that app on their phone would be able to sign in to the class. Um, so it's a much simpler way of taking attendance, especially in large classes, than calling roll. We have a video um, that you can find right there um, that will give you all the details that you need to manage that for yourself. I wanna demonstrate a couple things about student tracking just so you can track student performance and progress. The easiest way to do that is if you're using lessons and you go to lessons here, you'll see a tab for student progress. Now, typically you'll have a whole set of weeks of work um, sort of plotted out here. We just have one lesson in here, so it looks a little funny. What we're seeing is these students are 50% complete. What that means for them is we have two assignments that are active on this particular lesson and they've completed one of those assignments. They're showing as 50%, these students show no progress here. Um, once they're done, we'll see obviously 100% completion there. Um, all they need to do is to complete that one last assignment. Sometimes a requirement is something that involves maybe time tracking or something like that. Occasionally we have situations where faculty need to make a judgment call about whether or not they consider a student's um, work complete when Populi hasn't automatically marked it complete. That's possible for you to do. So let's just, as a hypothetical, go to Javier here, and then we can edit his completion 
just by going into clicking on this 50% completed, choosing edit completion, and then clicking the box there. We're saying he's completed all the work for this lesson. We can save that and then pop out of there and then go back to lessons, student progress, and now he's 100% complete on that week one lesson. That's a possibility there, just so you know as faculty, you can override um, those um, automatic calls that Populi's making there. We also have some options under reporting. It's good to be aware of these. Change log is really helpful just for you to be able to pin down, you know, when a student was actually admitted to a course or, you know, what a student's grade was at one point in the past. If for some reason you updated that, you're able to see all that information right here on the change log. It's not fully comprehensive, but we track a number of things. Um, and you can adjust the dates here to look at a time further back or, or get more specific about a particular day and see the changes that happen there. That can be really useful. Real quick, let's look at a few ways that you can interact with students. One of the obvious ways is the dashboard. You can create a message here on the dashboard and then um, post that. It will be available here, but then it will also trigger an email to go out to students who have their notification set up to receive bulletin board emails from their courses. You can see that there's a lot of options here for emailing the section, um, texting, whatever. So if you wanna make, uh, you wanna touch base with um, students that way, that's an option. We also, if you go to the roster, we have those same options there, right there. But then you could also click a couple of students. Let's say you just wanted to touch base with a couple of students. You could check the box for their names there, go to actions, and then say email selected students. Those are a couple of options for um, being able to interact with, talk to students. Obviously, assignments, tests, these kinds of things, there's lots of opportunities to interact with students around a particular assignment or a question on a test, things like that there. Okay, so let's talk about how you kind of wrap things up with a course. You've set everything up on the course and then you've worked through student grades, administered tests, taken attendance, all that stuff. Now you're at the end of the term and you wanna close things down. Hopefully you've received all the necessary work from students in order to give them a final grade and then um, finalize the course. Let's look at what that looks like. We've already seen the grade book, but with this in mind, you would want to go in and then edit any grades, input any um, outstanding work. So this is how things look currently. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and hit save grades there. Now, we happen to know that Blaze Kilnorth just has not um, completed a few things. There are extenuating circumstances. He's been granted an incomplete. So let's look at what, how we can set that up. If we go to the roster here um, and then manage Blaze's status, we can set him to incomplete is yes, and then save. Now he's going to be an incomplete student in the course, which means that there's work that he still needs to do. Um, we're now ready to go ahead and finalize the course. We can finalize the course either under gradebook or under settings. Um, and then all we're doing there is clicking finalize course. And then we're going to finalize the course in all students. So these grades, this work that they have here is what they're going to get um, once we hit submit. You can see we're also getting a notification that there are unentered assignment grades up here. So these are just going to be automatically excused since there haven't been any grades entered there at all. We'll hit submit. Couple things. If we go back to the roster, we'll see that even though this course is finalized and you as faculty lose access to the course once it's finalized, there's not much else that you can do there, except if you're still waiting for work to come in from a student, you'll see them stay incomplete there. You can then go in to the roster here 
mark them complete. You can enter grades there for them, and then you can finish that up, mark them complete, save grades. And then if we go back to the roster again, ah, now everybody's totally finalized. We can see that lock icon there, marking them out as finalized. Okay, so we went all the way through that life cycle of the course to the point that we have final grades entered, students are finalized, they've received these grades. So that's running a course in Populi. We looked at setting a course up, kind of managing things as the course goes, and then entering final grades and finalizing the course. Thanks for watching. If you would like, you can click subscribe, and there's that little bell that comes up, ding, ding, ding. That will let you know um, whenever we post a new video. You can also click like. We'd appreciate it. We're nice folks. We get along. Thanks for using Populi. I've been Josh. You've been great. Bye-bye.